Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hi. I hardly ever go away in the winter. Dos cosas aquí o tres. Hardly ever. Hardly duramente. Apenas. ¿Qué significa apenas? Hardly ever con ever. Hardly ever is a casi nunca. Es la forma más corriente en inglés de almost never. Decimos más hardly ever. Y lo decimos entre el sujeto y el verbo. En este caso, I hardly ever go away in the winter. Ahora, the go away es poner tierra de por medio. O sea, alejarse de la ciudad donde vivo en plan de vacaciones. To go away. To go away. I hardly ever go away in the winter. Los británicos probablemente dirían I hardly, I hardly ever go away in winter. Sin in the winter. En invierno en vez de en el invierno. Pero da lo mismo. I hardly ever go away. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Eso es lo más importante aquí. Hardly ever. Casi nunca. Never es nunca. Hardly ever. Casi nunca. I hardly ever go away in the winter. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 103. Hoy vamos a ver la frase I hardly ever go away in the winter. Apenas voy de viaje en el invierno. Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase. I hardly ever. Apenas o rara vez. I hardly ever. No lo olvides, es casi como apenas nunca juntos. I hardly ever. Así es. Y también tiene una H aspirada. <risa> hardly. I hardly ever no. I hardly ever. Veamos algunos ejemplos. Mrs. Humphreys hardly ever goes out. La señora Humphreys casi nunca sale. O Mrs. Humphreys hardly ever stays in. La señora Humphreys casi nunca queda en casa. Casi nunca, apenas, rara vez, todo eso se podemos decir con hardly ever. Y sí, esa H es tan importante. Hardly ever. Una vez más, perfecto. Hardly ever. Muy bien. Hi, guys. Pues la gente por aquí no para de preguntarme cómo puedo tener este corpazo que tengo. Pues facilísimo. Easy peasy. El secreto. Pues es que casi nunca tomo el desayuno. Sí, I hardly ever have breakfast. Seriously, hardly ever. Y las salchichas, Puf, ni hablar. I hardly ever have sausages. Seriously, hardly ever. Escucha, si tú puedes decir hard con ese H respirada, Hard, también puedes decir hardly ever. Escucha lo claro que yo digo casi nunca. Y dilo en inglés, hardly ever. Come on, otra vez, hardly ever. El cocido, Uf, no, casi nunca tomo cocido. I hardly ever have cocido, seriously, hardly ever. ¿Y el chorizo? <laughs> Ni hablar. I hardly ever have chorizo. Hardly ever. Esto es el secreto de este corpazo. Ahora vamos a ver la segunda parte de la frase. Go away. Ese tiene dos significados. Go away puede significar lárgate, pero también significa ir de viaje. Y vamos a verlo en este contexto. Ir de viaje. I hardly ever go away. Casi nunca voy de viaje o apenas nunca voy de viaje. Ahora, vamos a ver más ejemplos. He goes away three times a month. Él va de viaje tres veces al mes. He goes away. La tercera persona del singular. He goes away. I think we should go away more often. Creo que deberíamos ir de viaje Ma, con más frecuencia, more often. So, ir de viaje, go away. No decimos to go on a travel. Eso no suena bien en inglés. We go away, go away. I'm going away next week. Voy de viaje la semana que viene. Y ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que es 
hair dryer. I'm going away next week and I need to take a hair dryer. Tengo que llevar una secadora del pelo. Hair dryer. No lo puedo olvidar. Go away. Go away. Go away. Sorry, there's a virus on the computer and it won't go away. Go away. Go away. Claro, ir fuera. Go away. We say to go away. To go away. There's a virus on the computer and it won't go away. Come on, go away, virus. My antivirus software. Now it'll go away. <laughs> All right. Okay, look, it's going away. The virus is going away. Perfect. Ahora vamos a ver la última parte de la frase, en invierno. En inglés se puede decir in winter o también in the winter. Los dos valen, los dos son intercambiables. Pero lo que no podemos decir es in winter, es wa, wa, ese sonido, winter. Practícalo conmigo, in winter. Muy bien, in winter. Y en verano, ¿cómo decimos en verano? In summer, perfecto. Y en otoño? In autumn, muy bien. Y en primavera? In spring, perfecto. Y ahora veamos algunos ejemplos. In winter, we like to have soup for dinner. En invierno nos gusta tomar sopa para la cena. To have soup in winter. It's nice. It's nice and warm. Bueno, in winter, la palabra del día, ¿te acuerdas de la palabra del día? Uso una secadora del pelo. In winter, I use a hair dryer. Muy bien. Y en verano, apenas uso una secadora del pelo. In summer, I hardly ever use a hairdryer. Muy bien. Hmm, un anuncio para irse fuera en invierno. A ver, ¿qué pone aquí? Un anuncio para irse, irse fuera en invierno. To go away on winter? What a mess! Este anuncio está sucísimo. Go away on winter? No, 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 no. no. En invierno se dice in the winter. Or in winter. Dilo conmigo. In the winter. In the winter. Eso es. To go away in the winter. Esto lo tengo que corregir. Es que está sucísimo. A ver. Muy bien. Pues yo casi nunca me voy fuera en invierno. I hardly ever go away in the winter. De hecho, yo casi nunca voy fuera, porque con tantos errores que hay aquí, siempre estoy limpiando. I never go away in the summer. I never go away in the spring. I never go away in the winter. I never go away in the autumn. Can you go away in the winter? I never can go away in the winter. Hello. I was at the party yesterday. I spoke to lots of interesting people when I went to the party. Yesterday, I went to a party. Yes, I love parties. Why? Because I speak to lots of interesting people. Escuchar en el pasado. I spoke to, I spoke, no, I spoke, eh? I spoke to lots of interesting people at the party. I went to the party yesterday and I spoke to lots of interesting people. Lots of is lo mismo que a lot of. Es más fácil de decir lots of. A lot of. I spoke to lots. Spoke to, no spoke with. I spoke to lots of interesting. Interesting. Cuatro sílabas. Lo, decim lo decimos en tres. Interesting. 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 I spoke to. I spoke to lots of interesting people when I went to the party yesterday. Hello 
and welcome to a new class, a new day. I hope you're ready to learn. Okay, our sentence today is, I spoke to lots of interesting people when I went to the party. Yo hablé con mucha gente interesante cuando fui a la fiesta. So, I spoke to, ¿qué significa? Hablé con, y es el verbo to speak, right? To speak. Y ojo, cuando dices hablar con, no olvides to, ¿ok? I spoke to. To. Es el verbo irregular en el pasado. El verbo to speak se convierte en spoke. Y ojo con la pronunciación. Spoke. Esa O suena como O-U. Spoke. Spoke. ¿Ok? I spoke to lots of interesting people. Más ejemplos. I spoke to Marta this morning. I spoke to Juan this afternoon. I spoke to Jaume yesterday. Okay, so, el verbo to speak en pasado simple is spoke, con OU, sonido como OU, spoke. Y no olvides to, muy importante. Hablé con, I spoke to, okay? Y también lots of es igual a a lot of, okay? I spoke to lots of interesting people. Keep practicing. Oh, I love the shoes here. It's just beautiful. And I'm going to get a discount. Mm -hmm. Hablé con el dueño. I spoke to the owner and he's going to give me a discount. 50%. Oh. And I spoke to the owner of the handbag shop and she's going to give me a discount too. And I spoke to the owner of the watch shop and he's going to give me a discount too. That's right. We say I spoke to him. I speak, no, I spoke to him. Perfect. I spoke to him, I spoke to her, she spoke to me, we spoke to each other, and now I'm getting a discount. <laughs> now, I need to speak to the owner of the bracelet shop, yes, because I spoke to someone last week and she said I could get a discount, but I want to speak to the owner just in case. <laughs> oh, And I spoke to the owner of the bikini shop and he said I could get a discount of 60%, 60% on all bikinis. Oh, you should speak to the owner. Honestly, I spoke to all the owners and all the owners are giving me a discount. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Let's continue our lesson. I spoke to lots of interesting people when I went to the party. Yo hablé con mucha gente interesante cuando fui a la fiesta. So here we're going to look at interesting people. Bueno, empezamos con la pronunciación. Di la palabra conmigo. Interesting. Repeat. Interesting. Nunca decimos interesting, por favor, please, no. Interesting, eso es típico de Spanish, no. So, interesting, quedan en qué? Tres sílabas. Interesting. Repeat. Interesting. Ok. Entonces, interesting people, gente interesante. For example, there are lots of interesting people at my company. Hay mucha gente interesante en mi empresa. I know lots of interesting people. Conozco mucha gente interesante. I spoke to lots of interesting people. Hablé con. Remember, el verbo to speak en pasado simple es el verbo uh, spoke. Ok, verbo irregular. Y don't forget to. I spoke to lots of interesting people. Ok, they're talking to some interesting people. Están hablando con gente interesante. So repeat, interesting people. Aha, I'm working on a portrait. That's right, un retrato, a portrait. And I get a lot of inspiration here in the park, you see. There are a lot of interesting people here in the park that I can paint and interesting things that I can paint. I mean, look at that, look at those birds. Can you see the birds over there? They're beautiful. There are so many interesting things to paint here in the park. That's right, we say interesting. Not interesting, 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 interesting things here in the park. And of course, interesting people. Oh, there's a couple over there. That, they seem very happy. It's interesting to include people like that, happy people in the park. 
a beautiful scene, some beautiful animals, beautiful birds, beautiful trees. I love including all of these interesting things. Ah, I know, destiny. I'll include destiny in my painting. She's such an interesting person, of course. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Okay, we're going to finish our class now. I spoke to lots of interesting people when I went to the party. Yo hablé con mucha gente interesante cuando fui a la fiesta. Okay, so the last part is when I went to the party. Okay, cuando fui a la fiesta, el verbo ir es el verbo to go, ¿verdad? Y el verbo es verbo irregular en el pasado. Entonces, se conjuga a que went. Repeat, went. Y don't forget, esa T al final, no es when. Porque si no dices, no pronuncias bien la T, when, eso significa cuando. Oh, así que ojo. Entonces, con la T ahí. Ok, so, when I went to the party. Y don't forget, no olvides, to. Cuando fui a la fiesta. Siempre cuando decimos ir a un sitio, hay que meter en inglés esa partícula to. Ok, más ejemplos. I went to the party. I went to the concert. I went to the airport. Okay, so remember, went to. Y la palabra del día es mall. M-A-L-L, -L, mall. Significa centro comercial, sobre todo en los Estados Unidos. Okay, so mall, la palabra del día. Okay, keep studying. Hello there. Another letter from a sad fan this time. Let's see what it says. Dear Destiny, Creo que mi marido me está poniendo los cuernos. Ay, no vino a casa después del trabajo la semana pasada. ¿Me puedes decir dónde se fue el lunes y el martes y el miércoles? Un saludo, Juana. Oh, the poor woman. Well, Juana, I, the great destiny, can help you. Let's see what we can do. Okay, Juana. On Monday, he went to the cinema. He went to the cinema. No problem, he went to the cinema. <sighs> On Tuesday, he went to, where did he go? He went to a restaurant. Ah, okay, he went to a restaurant. On Wednesday, he go to the beach. What the hell? Los espíritus de los que no hablan inglés están aquí. It's, he went to the beach, en el pasado. He went to the beach. So, you see, no problem. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, he went to these places with a woman. Sorry. Hello. As I've used up all the sugar, I'll just nip out and get some more. Cabe usar una expresión británica, pero se usa mucho en Gran Bretaña e Irlanda. I've just, I, as I've used up, como ya he usado todo el azúcar que hay. As I've used up, to use es utilizar o usar. To use up es consumir todo lo que hay. Y ya no hay azúcar porque he consumido, he usado todo lo que hay. He agotado el azúcar. As, como, ya que, puesto que. As, simplemente las dos letritas, as es puesto que, ya que o como. Como he usado ya todo el azúcar, as I've used up, used up, fijaos cómo lo pronuncio, used up, used up. Uso la D de used como trampolín hacia up. As I've used up all the sugar, I'll just nip out, o sea, salir de casa para comprar un poco más. I'll just nip out and get some more, get some more sugar. As I've used up all the sugar, I'll just nip out and get some more. Yeah. As I've used up all the sugar, as I've used up all the sugar, as I've used up all the sugar, I'll just nip out and get some more. I'll just nip out and get some more. As. Dos letritas. A, S, que tiene muchos significados. Significado aquí es como. Como he, util, he usado todo el azúcar que había. Como he agotado el azúcar que hay en, en la despensa. As I've. As. I have, as I've used up all the sugar, I will simply go out 
or nip out and get some more. Nip out is a British expression, never in America. I've never heard the expression in my life. But in any case, as is important, as is puesto que, ya que, o como, ya que, ya que, ya no hay azúcar, he usado todo el azúcar, as I've used up all the sugar, I'll just uh, nip out and get some more. I'll just go out, just, I'll just, just as simplemente saldré. ¿Qué más da? Simplemente me pondré, iré al coche, me meteré al coche y compraré más. I'll just go out and get some more, as I've used up all the sugar. Hey, how's it going? Como hoy es viernes, as today is Friday, it's nearly the weekend. And as I have two days off, I need to start preparing some dates for tonight and tomorrow night. And Sunday night? Are you following me? As means como. And as today's grammar point is as, I'm going to do my best to show you all the ways you use it. And I need you to pay attention. As I don't have much time before I leave, I need to start making myself look handsome. And as most girls like a guy who looks after himself, I should probably go to the gym. Well, as there's nobody here, I can do the exercises right here. Yeah. Well, you know what? As there's no one here and my boss has already left, I'm just gonna get going early. Hey, but uh, as I'm not supposed to do this, this can be our little secret, okay? <laughs> As I've used up all the sugar, I'll just go out and get some more. As I've used up all the sugar, to use is usar, utilizar. Ahora, to use up is usar hasta agotar. To use up. To use up the sugar means I have finished. There's no sugar left. As I've used up all the sugar, simple, bueno, se me ocurre que, I think it was just, se me ocurre salir y comprar más. I'll just, why not, why not, por qué no, I'll just, go out and get some more. I'll just nip out and get some more. As I've used up all the sugar. Used up. As I've used up all the sugar. Word of the day. Cemetery. Escuchad. En, en español, cementerio. Ahora en inglés, cemetery. Curiosamente, en el idioma español es el único idioma donde hay una N en esta palabra. En francés, cemetier. No semen. En, en italian, cemetere. Ceme. So, cemetery. Cemetery. No una N. No the cemetery. 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 Cemetery is the word of the day. Cemetery. Cema. Cema. Cemetery. It's a great day here in Spain, but I've used up all my sunscreen. I, yeah, I've used up. I've used up all my sunscreen. I don't have any left. I've used it up. I've used up all my sunscreen. I'm trying to work on my tan, but I've used up all my sunscreen. That's right, we say I have used up all my sunscreen. I've used it up. Yeah, it doesn't matter though, because as you can see, I've got a pretty good tan already. I'm sure I'm not going to burn. I don't even need this sunscreen. I mean, I'm practically Spanish, right? I mean, just look at me. I mean, my skin is, as they say, moreno, right? Practically Spanish. My friends told me I look like a tomato. I suppose that means, yeah, I suppose that's a good thing because tomatoes are Spanish, right? I look like a tomato. It means I'm Spanish. It doesn't matter that I've used up all my sunscreen. It doesn't matter. Time to catch a few rays. As I've used up all the sugar, I'll just uh, go out and buy some more. Why not? I'll just go out and get some more. It's interesting in English how we use the word just. It's, it's very difficult to translate it to, to normal Spanish. Uh, one way is simply. Simplemente saldré comprar más. You know, 
uh, as I've used up, used up, used up, used up, dup, as I've used up all the sugar, well, I'll just, I'll just nip out or go out. I'll just go out and buy some more. I'll just go out and get some more. Say, ¿qué más da? Me levanto y salgo, está en diez minutos de aquí, compro más. I'll just go out and get some more. I'll just go out and get some more. Some more, some more, some more, some more, some more. I'll just go out, nip out, or Britannicos diría nip out a veces. I'll just nip out and get some more. Uh, now that I've used up all the sugar, as I've used up as, since I've used up all the sugar, I'll just nip out and get some more. Why not? I'll just buy some more. It's very simple. Hi guys, Felicity here. <laughs> Today, as you can see, we're making a cake. Oh, I'm so excited. So, after the flour, you put in the sugar. The problem is, I ate a little bit of the sugar, and now there's no sugar left. Mm. So, I need to nip out and get some more sugar. So, I'll be back in two seconds. That's right, we say nip out. It means to go out for a short while, to nip out. Repeat with me, I need to nip out and buy more sugar. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm gonna nip out and buy more sugar. Now I also need to buy some more chocolate because the chocolate is finished. Mm -hmm. I ate a little bit of chocolate, but not a lot of chocolate. Margaret ate most of the chocolate, oh no. So I'm going to nip out and buy some more chocolate. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have some sweets to decorate. <laughs> There's no sweets because um, Mike ate most of the sweets. Oh, oh, Mike. So I need to nip out. I need to buy some more sugar. I need to nip out and buy some more chocolate. And I need to nip out and buy some more sweets. But stay right there. I'm going to nip out and be right back because we are going to make the tastiest cake in the world. Fun, fun, fun. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día.